It is Thursday the 23rd of September. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's all sort of hitting me. Um, I'm doing, I'm out gonna do a, just a short two mile run um, this evening. And then I'm gonna do one more long run on the weekend. 17 miles, that's my hope. At least 17 miles. And then, then I have to stop running a week and that's a week before the marathon and then the third is the is the thing so it's all happening been checking my email figuring out what i need to do how i need to prepare where i need to go and all that fun stuff it's gonna be great the one good thing about the london marathon is they are super organized and it's fantastic just feeling just being a part of that big machine that is the London Marathon. It's just such a buzz and I'm so excited that I get to do these vlogs and and take y'all with me on this adventure step by step. It's going to be so much fun. So um, I wanted to take an opportunity to talk about what I'm fundraising for in case, in case you hadn't figured it out already. Um, I work with a theater company called Covenant Players. We are a Christian theater company, uh, ministry, and uh, I've been working with Covenant Players for uh, 28 years now. Uh, I, I joined Covenant Players when I was 18, fresh out of high school, and I've been working with them ever since. And uh, we took a real knock uh, during this whole COVID during this whole time with COVID and stuff, uh, as has every theater-based organization, the theaters on the West End, the theaters in Broadway, they all had to shut down, obviously, because uh, we we represented one of the one of the strongest carriers, potential carriers of of the COVID virus, and uh, around March of 2020, we were grounded. And uh, we 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 stopped touring, and we stopped performing because we obviously took uh, we needed to take responsibility for our part in not spreading the virus. So uh, now, as things begin to lighten up uh, here in the UK, England England has opened up. Wales is a little bit more conservative, creeping up behind. We're still, we're still in the midst of some uh, measures, but we're starting to open up too. And as that happens worldwide, as an organization, as a ministry, Covenant Players is starting to step out cautiously. We have a whole set of protocols that we are taking with us into every, every program and every performance we do to ensure that we do not spread the virus on. So we had our first performance in a church, a local church in Pontypool, uh, on on Sunday, this last coming Sunday, this last Sunday, and boy, was it fun! Uh, the rehearsal process was was a lot of fun, and the moment I stepped out and said, in my in my performing voice, when I said when I greeted everyone with a hearty good evening. A shot of adrenaline rushed through me and I remembered, you know what, this is what I love to do. I love to be on the stage, I love to do, I love to act, I love to direct, I love to, uh, I love to do these plays that, that, that help people, that reach out and, and aid in communication, not only in churches, but we, we work in schools, prisons, nursing retirement centers. And uh, I, especially uh, highlighting right now our, our work in schools. Obviously, schools schools are very hesitant at the moment in terms of outside groups. Uh, but schoolwork, especially here locally, um, our schoolwork has been so vital. We've been working with one of the local uh, PR, PRUs, pupil referral units. We've been working with the anxiety unit locally just uh, using using the drama, using the plays in our repertoire to to provide an alternative form of education, uh, a way to 
for these students to express themselves, to open themselves up and, and express their opinions, to talk about what they think, to get a feeling of success. We do drama workshop exercises uh, to not only teach drama skills, but but also communication skills in life. So they're obviously they're transferable skills. And so uh, as Covenant players, we have a repertoire of about 3,500 plays, not all of them we do on the road, um, you know, during our work, but we have a vast amount of those available to us to, to take into the field. And so that is what, <clears throat> that is what I'm raising funds for, uh, running this marathon. I'm raising funds to go directly toward funding programs into schools into churches, into prisons, these places that can't afford us or are low low in budget, uh, especially schools that are on the wings of society, on the edges, and uh, the funds that the funds that we're raising through doing this marathon are going directly toward funding us to be able to go into these places and provide these these very needed programs just to, I like to call it the light switch moment. I live for the light switch moment. Um, my friend Phil Highland uh, would probably agree with me. Uh, he's the one who, who does the Upgrade Academy in the 30 days that I just came through. I live for the, the light switch moment, that moment when you're up teaching, when you're doing drama work, when we're doing the drama exercises, when we're working with these groups of students and suddenly there's that switch in their eyes and they get it. And something has turned on in their mind and they've seen something different about themselves. They've seen something new about themselves. Maybe they didn't know they had before or something they didn't believe that they could do or think. And I live for that moment. It gives me energy. And uh, you know, during this year, it's been tough. It's been a tough year. Um, we've spent this time just try, just trying to get through, just trying to get by. And of course, as anyone would agree, paperwork <laughs> does not bring fulfillment or satisfaction. Well, it doesn't for me. However, when that paperwork and that red tape goes towards something and pushes me toward a direction that I know will get me to where I want to be, then of course, that's what fuels me. Anyway, I'm kind of talking around in circles a little bit, which is my want. I tend to do that because I'm not on a script. I didn't write this out, I just spoke from my heart. So I hope this is communicated. But um, in, this, in this post that I'm going to put up on my Facebook page and in the description of my YouTube video, I'm going to put the link to my uh, Virgin Money Giving fundraising page so you can all you have to do is click on it and you can make a donation it doesn't matter where in the world you are you can donate dollars you can donate euro uh, you can just donate however you feel you can and uh, I couldn't have done this whole process without any of your support so please I would ask let your support continue and consider supporting Covenant players financially so we can get back out there in the field and do these drama programs that are so important. So thank you very much. I have reached the tunnel. I love this tunnel. And I'm going to stop recording this video so I can start my run. And there's the tunnel. Isn't that cool? It's like corrugated iron. And um, I love this pathway. I haven't been here for months. I've been sticking to the uh, canal because it's it's been, it's dirt, so it's been softer under, underfoot. So I thought, why not come down here for a change? So here I go. I'm going to uh, sign off this vlog entry when I'm finished with this two-mile run. And more later. That was ouchy. I didn't have my little cushiony, my little woolly pads on my heels because I figured two miles was okay. I'm sure it's going to be fine, but that's ouchy. A little bit ouchy. I think because also 
this path is uphill that way. <clears throat> it's just a steady uphill. It's very hard to notice when you're walking on it. And it makes a difference. Anyway, I did it two miles. I'm gonna go home, stretch, and do my yoga. I'm gonna really stretch this one out. So, um, I need to stop being so reactionary to pain. It's gonna hurt. I mean, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> Why do I always do this? Anyway, breathe. It's gonna be great on the road.